We move to the bottom of the ninth inning at Dodger Stadium. 36 times this year, the Dodgers have come from behind to win. Four times they have won when trailing after eight innings. They will try to make it five tonight. They trail three to two as we move to the bottom of the ninth and the closer for the Pirates, Matt Caps, is on and he's gonna have his work cut out for him. Russell Martin, Andre Ethier, and Manny Ramirez are due up, Mark. Well, we talked about the confidence boost that Joe Torre has given to Randy Wolf and others. This is a confidence boost for, for Russell Martin. Some people might say, well, why aren't you pinch hitting for Russell Martin? This is what Russell Martin needs. He needs a, a big responsibility, come up with a big at bat, get, get on any way you can and start this offense for the ninth. Caps has 25 saves on the season, but his ERA is 5.96. His one loss record is three and eight. He's making his 52nd appearance of the season. Hasn't had a whole lot of save opportunities lately. I mean, after all, the Pirates have lost 15 of their last 17. He did get his 25th save on Sunday. It was his first since August 27th. First pitch to Russell Martin is taken for a called strike 0-1-1. Well, another one of those relievers that the Dodgers were looking at the trading deadline through Matt Caps. They went the Sherrill, the George Sherrill way because they got a left-hander out of the bullpen. This is a guy with closer ability. The 0 one popped up on the infield. Caps is pointing to it. LaRoche says he's got it on the infield grass. He makes the catch, and on two pitches, Russell Martin is retired for the first out. Well, that's not the at-bat that they wanted out of Russell Martin, but tip your cap to, to Matt Caps throwing that pitch in. The hard fastball that rides in on you pops him up to Andy LaRoche. Well, certainly Andre Ethier has been the, the most dramatic Dodger in terms of ninth inning walk-offs. He's had a, an RBI single, a walk-off single a walk-off double and three walk-off homers. Right now, he's just looking to get on base, perhaps a home run to tie it up, but right now I'm thinking, Mark, that he would just want to just drive the ball hard somewhere and get on base. He wants to get on base, but that thought definitely creeps in his mind of what he's done for the dramatic for this L.A. Dodger ball club. He takes the first pitch outside for a ball. It's 1-0. Ethier is 0-3. for 3. All those were against the left-handed starter, Zach Duke. He bounced back to the pitcher, struck out swinging and grounded a second. Now he's facing the right-handed closer, Matt Caps. Well, he's just got to be feel comfortable having a right-hander on the mound with his struggles with a left-hander. The 1-0, fouled straight back. He had a good cut at that one. One and one, the count. Well, that fastball down and away by Matt Caps. He, this is the situation that he doesn't want to get hurt. He knows the history of Andre Ethier as well, the end of the games, because it, it goes around. That, that news spreads around the league with Sports Center and all these sports shows on. These guys definitely uh, take notice of what's going on out west here. Caps has given up 10 home runs this season, including one when he got the save on Sunday against Lance Berkman. He had a two-run lead, so the homer cut the lead to one, but he still got the save. Now the 1-1 pitch to Ethier has ripped a fair ball down the right field line. Ether around first base, the ball took a big bounce. Jones picks it up, throws to second, not in time. In with a feet first slide is Andre Ethier. It's a one out double and the tying run is in scoring position. Well, Steve Pierce plays the ball right down the line. He drives this ball, Andre Ethier does, drives this ball off the, the siding of the, of the fence down there near the stands, kicks out to the right fielder. Great hustle play by Andre Ethier getting the second base scoring position with that one out. Manny Ramirez up to the plate. Big at bat by Andre Ethier. And well, we talked about this in terms of Manny Ramirez and whether he uh, will be intentionally walked in certain situations. Back in the fourth inning, the runner at second base and two outs, they pitched to Manny Ramirez. Now we're in the ninth inning, a runner at second base and one out. Will they pitch to Manny or will they intentionally walk him? Well, if I'm, if I'm John Russell, I'm putting him on base because of the history that he has in this game. He might not be swinging the bat that well, but you don't want to put Manny Ramirez in a situation late in the game and lose the game because of that. The catcher Ryan Doman has looked into the dugout and he is going to sit down. So they are at least going to pretend like they are pitching to Manny. Maybe they will go after him. We shall see. Ethier at second representing the tying run. Ramirez at the plate. The first pitch misses outside for a ball, 1 0. Interesting situation, managerial situation. He looks down and, and wants Matt Caps to just go out there, go after him, pitch cautiously because you have a base open, but this surprises me a little bit. On deck is Matt Kemp, after him is Casey Blake. Ramirez is 0 for 3, line to right, grounded to third, and he struck out looking. Caps on trying to close it out. The 1-0 pitch. 
This is outside again. Two balls and no strikes. So far, the first two pitches, Mark, have been not close to the strike zone. Yeah, and th those type of pitches that you understand that the catcher's going to look over and, and ask John Russell, is he going to put him on now? Should be this, this situation because he didn't go after those pitches out, out of the off the plate. Should we put him on and not put Matt Caps in a tough situation of making that mistake? Caps is taking his time. Manny stepped out of the batter's box. Most of this crowd is on its feet. Caps has got the ball in his hand behind his back as he looks in for the sign, brings the hands together at the belt. The 2-0 pitch is fouled off behind home plate. Two balls and one strike to count to Manny. Manny with 18 home runs this season. And out of all the dramatic walk-off victories that the Dodgers have had this year. Manny has not had one of the hits. Heath years had five, but none for Manny. And Manny has set that bar so high, especially with the performance he had in a Dodger uniform last year. Really a surprise in a situation like this that he hasn't really been swinging the bat that well, but the Pirates will go after him. Cruz is keeping Heath year close at second base. They play him to pull. Pierce well off the line at first. The 2-1 on the way. Fouled straight back behind home again. Another big cut for Manny. Just misses. 2-2 two two the count. Well, Josh, those fastballs are getting deep in the strike zone. And they're and they're actually he's actually getting beat with the fastball. Talking to some, some people around the league, they sense that Manny Ramirez isn't hitting the fastball. They're going after him in these situations because that's what he's doing. He's fouling balls off, actually popping a lot of fastballs up. And Caps has good life on his fastball. That last one was clocked at 95 miles an hour, at least on the stadium radar gun. So two balls and two strikes. One out. Ethier representing the tying run at second base. Pirates lead 3-2. Last of the ninth from Dodger Stadium. The 2-2 pitch. A little flare down the right field line. Pierce is there. He makes the catch as his second baseman, Cruz, slides to avoid running into him. So Manny gets jammed, he pops up to first. There's two away, and now it's all up to Matt Kemp. Big situation for Matt Kemp, and he's been swinging the bat well. Disappointment from the Dodgers fans of Manny Ramirez not coming big in, in that situation. But Matt Kemp, this is what he's, he's evolving into this player that they're relying on Matt Kemp and Andre Ethier. Good situation for Matt Kemp right here. Back on June 16th, Kemp had an RBI single in the 10th inning when the game was tied at four against the A's to win it. Right now, just looking for a base hit to keep this game alive. Dodgers trailing 3-2. Both teams with five hits, both teams with no errors. Middle game of this three-game series. Caps gets his sign from his catcher, Domit. Checks the runner at second. The first pitch to Kemp, and that misses outside for a ball, 1-0. I'm reminded, Mark, of a couple of games we had in Arizona last year with Kemp when he came in at a crucial spot. One night, swung at the first pitch, made the out. The next night, took the first pitch, fouled off a couple, worked the counts against the closer Qualls of Arizona and ended up with a big single that tied up the ball game. Let's see what he does tonight's ball game. He's ahead in the count right now, 1-0. Caps with two looks to second. Now to the plate, and it's a called strike. Kemp thought about it but held back on the swing. Well, that's the slider that Caps throws, and that's the scouting report on Matt Kemp. Throw those sliders. Hopefully he gets out of the strike zone. The biggest adjustment he's made all year is he stayed away from swinging at that slider off the plate. Bit of a hole in right center. Other than that, it's pretty much straight up for the outfield. They play Kemp to pull on the infield. Second baseman Cruz on the grass. Pierce well off the line once again. The 1-1 one -one to Kemp. Way high with that fastball. Two balls and one strike to count. Still a base open for Caps to work with so he can throw pitches out of the strike zone, try to get Matt Kemp in a big situation to try to do just that. If Kemp can keep the inning alive on deck is Casey Blake. Kemp tonight is one for three. Doubled and scored in the fifth. Also flew out to center and he struck out. Two balls, one strike, two outs. Last of the ninth. Caps is set. Here he comes home. 
Line drive over the head of the second baseman, Cruz. Ether around third. Bo is going to send him. The throw is not close. He saved Kemp. will go to second on the throw. Matt Kemp has tied it. 3-3 here in the ninth. What a huge situation for Matt Kemp. And he capitalizes on the slider that's thrown. He gets the same slide he took for a strike. Lines this ball to right field. Garrett Jones just launches the ball in this, into, into the plate. And Matt Kemp takes that second base. Great at bat by Matt Kemp. That might be an example of Garrett Jones, the right fielder, trying to be a hero, throwing out Ether when he had no chance. And with Kemp's speed, he easily makes it to second base. And now the winning run is at second base. We're tied at three. And now here's Casey Blake, who tripled and scored back in the fifth inning. That started the Dodgers' comeback. They trailed 3-0 in the second. They scored two in the fifth. They've scored one in the ninth. And Kemp is at second base. Blake trying to win it. Crowd still on its feet, buzzing from the Kemp single. And the first pitch to Blake. Misses for a ball. It's 1-0. Situation where it goes into the 10th inning. James McDonald warming up in the Dodgers bullpen. They don't want to get it to the 10th. They want Casey Blake to win it right here. And in the on-deck circle is Jim Tomei. That's the pitcher spot after the double switch with Loney. So he's waiting on deck, lurking on deck. The 1-0 to Blake. And that misses for a ball. Two balls and no strikes. And Josh, the Dodgers like that situation, having Tomey, his presence in the on-deck circle. Matt Capps looks, look, looks over, and they do. They peek over, and they see that situation. They know who's up next, and they know the experience that's on deck. So 2-0 the count. Camp at second base with great speed. A single will score him. Now the pitch. Taken again for a ball. Three balls and no strikes. And again, Jim Tomey is on deck if Blake walks. The Dodgers have had so many dramatic victories here at home this season, especially in the first two months of the year. Ethier's had five game-winning hits. Casey Blake had a game-winning single back on July 25th to beat the Marlins. That night, the final was 4-3. If he does it again tonight, it'll also be 4-3. Here's the 3-0. Taking all the way, there's a strike. It's 3-1. So the crowd is going to pause for a little bit and catch its breath, and then they'll start the clapping and the cheering once again. Blake out of the batter's box. Now he steps back in. A great hitter's count right here. Three and one. Tied at three in the ninth. And now the Pirates want to talk it over. The catcher, Ryan Dome, is going to go out and talk with Matt Capps and make sure they're on the same page. Here. Yeah, they want to get on the same page. This is a position that you don't want to make a mistake. 3-0, Casey Blake taking the whole way. Took that fastball right down the middle. Some hitters really don't feel comfortable swinging 3-0. You'll, you'll see a lot of guys that, that do take that pitch. With Tomey's presence on the on-deck circle, Casey Blake knows he's probably going to get a good pitch to hit here. The outfielder arms. Andrew McCutcheon has a pretty good arm. Millage's arm is all right. The 3-1, a check swing, and he just got a piece of it. And Casey's not too happy with himself kicking the dirt a bit there as the count is now full 3-2. Well, I think Casey was thinking along the lines, too. He was probably going to get a fastball in that count. And he got that hard slider from Caps. Good pitch by Caps. And I'm sure because first base is open, Caps is a whole lot more willing to throw a 3-1 slider. Let's see what he does on this full count. Three balls and two strikes with two outs in the ninth. Dodgers trying to win it. They trailed 3-0. Now it's tied. Three apiece. The payoff pitch to Blake, ball four, and here comes Jim Tomey. This is why they got him, Mark. This is why Ned Coletti made the trade in the hours before the waiver deadline on August 31st. Tomey's a designated hitter in the American League. He can't play first base physically at this stage of his career, but he's got well over 500 home runs, and they got him for exactly these moments. Well, Josh, some of the comments that he made, and, and Ned Coletti making that move because of phone call, that Jim Tomey made of coming here and saying, you know what, I want a chance to win a championship. That's what Jim Tomey is here, and he's here for these situations right here. Joe Kerrigan going out, the pitching coach for the Pirates, because they just like to go over the scouting report to Matt Capps with Jim Tomey. But the big situation for Jim, exactly what he wants coming off of a big situation here. 
Tomey has 564 career home runs. That ranks 12th on the all-time list, five behind Rafael Palmero. But right now, he doesn't need a home run. All he needs is a single, and the second baseman, Luis Cruz, almost looks like a fourth outfielder. He's playing so deep with this shift. Well, much like Ron Be Ronnie Belliard uses here, he plays a deep second base. That's what Cruz is doing, because you know that the speed of Tomey's not going to get down there to first base too well. First pitch to Tomey is taken high for a ball. It's one ball and no strikes. The first baseman, Pierce, is also at the back of the infield dirt, not holding on Blake. Again, Cruz is a good 10 feet, if not 15 feet, into right field on the outfield grass. The shortstop, Cedeno, pulled well over up the middle. Outfield is pretty much straight away. The 1-0 to Tomey. Line drive on the ground, speared by Cedeno. Throws to first. He's got plenty of time as Tomey can only jog down there. And so the Dodgers are retired in the ninth, but they get the run. Matt Kemp, the RBI single in the bottom of the ninth. We're tied 3-3. We're going to extra innings after this timeout.